So if you're trying to learn blockchain and master this, you know, in-demand lucrative skill, you know, blockchain is one of the highest paying fields in tech right now. The demand is absolutely through the roof. Then you might be making some critical mistakes that are holding you back from actually achieving that goal. You know, I've helped lots of people, you know, learn this skill and I've seen some of these things pop up over and over again. And I'm going to break these down into some really key mistakes, you know, what they are and how you can avoid them so that you can, you know, crush your goals and become a blockchain developer. I'm going to talk about that in this video as a blockchain developer myself who works with this technology on a daily basis. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into some of the top mistakes that I see people making when they're trying to learn blockchain for the first time. Okay, whether you've got a programming background already, or you don't have a programming background already, some of these mistakes are, are really common. Okay, so the first mistake that I see happen all the time, and you might even heard me say this if you've been watching my YouTube channel before, but I'm going to repeat it here as the number one mistake because this is a huge misconception and you have to get this right if you're going to actually succeed at this. So one of the most common questions that I get is if I'm learning blockchain, should I go learn a bunch of other programming languages first and then go try to learn blockchain? So my answer is always no. And I really think it's a mistake if you try to do it that way. So here's why. Whenever you're learning, uh, you know, blockchain, you should start with the thing that's going to get you the most results so that you can actually get that quick feedback. So an example here would be if you're trying to go learn blockchain, then you should focus on the core skill that's going to get you the most understanding and and also productivity, which is the Solidity programming language for writing smart contracts. You should start by learning Solidity itself and then learning all the other skills around blockchain development as you go. So instead of going off and learning a bunch of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in abstract without seeing how they connect to blockchain, you should start by learning blockchain. And then as you reach the point where you need to learn you know, JavaScript, for example, maybe to write tests for your Ethereum smart contracts or create some sort of client side website that interacts with them. That's the point at which you should start learning those skills. As always, I'm a huge proponent of learning by doing so project based learning. So basically, whenever you go, you know, take a tutorial that teaches you blockchain for the first time, just like any of the free courses that I have on my YouTube homepage, those will teach you blockchain from scratch in order. So you'll learn Solidity first, and then you'll learn the, all the other skills as you need as you go along. So why is it really important to do it this way? Because when you're learning just JavaScript, JavaScript by itself, you're not going to see how it applies to blockchain. And you're honestly going to forget a lot of that information by the time you go try to incorporate it into your blockchain learning. And also, it's okay to do some focused uh, study on a specific programming language itself, like JavaScript, like at some point in your journey, you might want to take some time to work on JavaScript fundamentals outside the context of blockchain, but you don't want to do that first before you start applying it to blockchain because what actually gives your learning stickiness and actually where you'll actually retain the information and see how it's useful to you as a programmer is by having done it. And you'll have done it whenever you create applications with JavaScript, with blockchain, with Solidity. All right, so mistake number two that I see a lot of people making is really having a lack of focus or said another way, they keep jumping around from thing to thing and never following through and finishing anything thing. Okay. So this is true of most people that are learning programming in general, but let me tell you how it applies to blockchain. So this, you know, this can look like jumping around between different programming languages, like different frameworks, trying a bunch of different tutorial projects and never actually following through with getting good enough at that one specific thing. So you don't want to learn a bazillion different programming languages and only get kind of good at them. You want to get really, really, really good at a core set of skills. So really, you want to gain, first and foremost, mastery of Solidity as your primary skill set. And then, you know, you could include JavaScript secondarily behind that. You don't want to spend all this time saying, oh, should I get good at this programming language? Should I get good at that one? You want to pick Solidity because it's got the most developer community behind it. It's got the most applications actually out there in production. So when you go learn it, you know, you're, you're going to have actually resources resources whenever you get stuck. And as far as like blockchain frameworks go, they all work about the same. A lot of it's really just user preference. At the end of the day, you want to just pick something and stick with it. But if you want a simple recommendation, I use Truffle on this channel. So you're going to get a lot of knowledge by following those tutorials. Also inside the blockchain bootcamp. Same goes for JavaScript libraries. I mean, React, Vue, they all kind of work about the same. All of the JavaScript libraries that interact with the Ethereum blockchain, Web3.js, Ethers.js. So instead of taking all the time to make decisions on what you should use, you can shortcut a lot of that 
uh, and actually just use what I teach you on this channel because they all work. You know, they have quite a bit of support in the developer community. We do lots of tutorials about them and you're going to save your time from just spreading yourself thin across too many things, which might cause you to quit. Which leads me to the next mistake that I think a lot of people make when they're trying to, you know, develop this new skill of blockchain programming or really any programming for that matter, which is really giving up too early. And so I want to try to give you all the pitfalls, you know, in this video that might cause you to give up too early because uh, the, fr the frustration I was just talking about, of maybe like learning too many things and never getting good enough at them. But the reality is, most people who I see give up on this journey, they usually give up way too soon, okay? And so the truth of the matter is when you're learning any new skill, a lot of people give up right before they're about to make a big breakthrough. That's kind of how learning tends to work because don't forget, programming is hard. It's just like any other abstract skill that takes time and effort. And so you kind of get into this period where you're leaning in, leaning in, leaning in, and you're getting diminishing returns on you know the knowledge that you're gaining for the effort that you're applying. But at some point, you usually hit a, a breaking point where stuff starts to click and starts to make sense. But usually there's this maximum point of pain before you actually get that understanding. And that's where a lot of people stop. And so my recommendation on that is push through that. You know, sometimes you have to just take a step back. Sometimes you'll answer your own questions. You might need to reach out to other people to try to, you know, get some answers while you're stuck. But another big solution to that is actually be honest with yourself and see how long have you really been doing this and keep all that into perspective on a much bigger timeline. So some people might get frustrated with programming after a few weeks, feeling like they're not getting anywhere or even a month or two. And honestly, that's not really long enough to get that feedback on whether you're A, good at programming, want, B, want to do it, or C, have really put in enough time to see significant results to manifest, you know, professional level skills. Now, I've definitely had people uh, who I've, you know, coached and taught this to who have gotten professional level skills in a matter of months. But for the vast majority of people who might have a limited amount of time to devote to this, then you want to keep maybe like a year as a as a realistic timeline for really picking up these skills. And that's a dedicated, focused, consistent work. Now, I know that's a long time and it's not going to take everybody that amount of time, but I find that it's really beneficial to have a goal in mind because work tends to, you know, fill the amount of time that you give it and you don't want to, you know, just spend an indefinite amount of time learning this. But watching yourself track on that amount of progress can help you keep in perspective whether you might be giving up too soon. And another way to help you know keep track of this is to actually keep a spreadsheet. And this is something that I've seen has been very useful to other people over time as just sort of like a sanity check. Because you can sit down and feel like you've been learning something for a very long time when actually you really haven't spent that much time on the grand scheme of things. So literally, like keep a spreadsheet of every single hour that you spend learning blockchain development and then add it up before you feel like you want to quit, okay? So if you look at your spreadsheet and, and you have like less than 100 hours logged on learning this skill, that's nowhere near enough time to determine whether or not this is a good fit for you or not, right? People talk about, you know, stick with something for 90 days. That's true as well. But I mean, honestly, you want to have several hundred hours logged before you can really determine whether you're making significant progress towards this goal. And so that's a mistake I see a lot of people of giving up too early. Now let's talk about another mistake, which is not really getting started at all in the first place. So it's really easy to like, you know, see what a big opportunity there is in blockchain. Like I was talking about, it's one of the highest paid skills in tech. It's super in demand. And that can be a huge attractive draw. I mean, it's one of the reasons that I got into blockchain in the first place, even though I was already a programmer before. But that being said, it can still be daunting when you're getting into it and you don't always know where to start. Now, I've got a video pinned to my YouTube homepage that's going to tell you like the best strategy for breaking into blockchain from square one. Definitely go check that out as a useful guide. But at the end of the day, you might even watch that and feel a little bit overwhelmed. So the answer to this literally is just start because I find that a lot of people are just waiting for like the perfect time. Like, oh, I need to wait for this to happen. I need more time in my schedule to open up or maybe I need the perfect tutorial to come out, whatever it is. But usually the best thing is to just take action now because really when you're doing anything, it's all about momentum and you want to just take that first step and the next step so that you can, you know, just get momentum in the direction of actually learning this skill. And you'll find that as you do that, that momentum will help you break through the next barrier and actually overcome procrastination, all that type of stuff. When you start seeing that feedback and you see those wins, it helps you keep going and move on to the next thing. So to get past that problem, you really just have to start even if it's not a perfect start. All right. So the last major mistake that I see people m making, and this is one that really separates people from uh, people who are just kind of casually learning blockchain to people who actually end up becoming professional level blockchain developers, whether it's to build their own project or land a job, become a freelancer or whatever it is. Um, it's this. So it's basically getting stuck inside tutorials and never actually graduating to building something for real. 
Some people call this tutorial hell. Whatever it is, the whole idea is that you're just jumping around from tutorial to tutorial, but you're never actually developing real world skills that are applicable in a workplace. So what does this look like? Well, how do you know you're stuck here and how do you get out of it? So you're stuck here basically if you've been doing tutorials and but you then can't go think about how to build something and then actually build it for yourself, okay? So don't get me wrong, tutorials are great. I put out lots of them on this channel. It's a great way to get exposure to the technologies and learn the fundamentals so that then you can go actually go develop those real skills. Uh, because what you do as a programmer is you're given a task, you say, here's a problem, and then you write you, you solve the problem and you write the code to actually implement that solution, okay? So how do you break past this? Well, basically, um, the easiest way to do it is to just take an existing project and think of a new feature and then build that feature out on that project. So what that's going to do is let's just take a cryptocurrency exchange project, for example. So we've done projects like that in this program before. So basically, um, let's say you have an exchange, but now you want to add more tokens to that exchange. Well, you think, okay, I have to add new tokens. So you know, I want to find out new token smart contracts that will be supported by this exchange and how do I integrate them? How do I let other people buy them? And you step through, you know, one by one, everything that you need to do to modify the existing code to support that type of thing. This is really common in the workplace. You, know, you might have tickets that say implement this specific feature. And so you're already, you know, practicing skills that you would use in the workplace. Another way is to just think about something entirely from scratch and try to build it from the ground up. Okay. And that's going to be the most beneficial way to do this, but it's going to be harder than just implementing a basic feature on an existing project, okay? So whenever you do this, you're inevitably going to run into walls. But what you do is you figure out how to pull yourself up by your bootstraps, by your own bootstraps, and actually like Google through uh, things whenever you get stuck. So you might see an error message. Well, you might have to Google that error message and find out what the solution is. And this is where things just start to click. And this is where your skills actually become, you know, viable real world skills because it's part of the problem solving process. It's part of the creative process that makes your own human brain valuable to somebody else. But I see a lot of people make the mistake of not taking this step and actually graduating from tutorials, getting out of tutorial hell to actually create this skill. But that's how you know you're in it. And that's how you get out of it. All right. So those are some of the top mistakes that I see people making when they're trying to learn blockchain. And these can hold you back from achieving those goals. Okay, so, you know, if, you're, if you've made some of these mistakes before, don't worry about it. Like I said, I see these types of things all the time. I just want to make this video so that you can identify them and you can see how to actually, you know, keeping yourselves from making the same mistakes or if you are making them, this is how you fix them. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And, you know, if you want to get your hands dirty, get started implementing some of the tactics that I talked about today, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. We just put out a new one about how to learn Solidity in under an hour. Okay. So if you like those videos and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, you know, I can show you how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.